Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana, and I'm in my beehive studio today. Today is Casing Tuesday, the day that we take a card out of one of the current Stampin' Up! catalogs and we give it a makeover. And today's card um, has nothing really to do with the holiday season. Uh, it is a thank you card, and I loved today's makeover card because it had all these bright colors and I was just like yay let's do some bright colors I uh, was tired of just the plain old red and green that I've been using for the past few months so I thought this would be kind of a fun um, change up just for this week and um, then um, next week I will show you uh, back to a Merry Christmas card because Tuesday actually falls on uh, Christmas falls on a Tuesday this year I will not be doing a Facebook Live on Christmas morning, um, not because I couldn't do one, but I, I can bet a big bunch of you will not be on Facebook on Christmas morning, so I figured that we could leave that for a week and I will be back, I guess I will be back the following week, I haven't even looked at the calendar, ah oh, yeah, it will be, it will be uh, New Year's Day, I'll have to think about that one. I don't know maybe I should do a Facebook live on New Year's Day I think it was too too long to wait three weeks uh, for my next video so maybe I can be inspired to do a New Year's Day Facebook live for my casing Tuesday but I think we'll skip Christmas week um, uh, next week and uh, we'll be back on uh, January 1st are you with me or will you still be sleeping in I will be going to bed early I um I am not a night person <laughs> and my family always dismays because like I I go I go to bed before midnight on New Year's Eve most years because I cannot stay up. It just is not I get grumpy and cranky. I'm like happy in the morning but not at night so I don't know if any of you are like that but that is me uh, just a quick note if you are watching this on YouTube I am NOT live uh, I am live if um, you are watching me um, at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday I am live for you on Facebook but not ever on YouTube all right so what else can I tell you? Oh, fun story. This morning I dropped an embossing folder behind my desk. You can kind of, I have a cutting station back there. And I was organizing my little embossing folders and one slipped behind there. And um, it got wedged behind my desk and it got um, above my trim. So there was like no way I was getting it out. So I had to like pull forward my cabinetry and use my yardstick and I managed to scoot it along and finally get it out. I was like not very happy. I need that embossing folder because it's a new one coming out of the new catalog. So I managed to extract it um, in a reasonable amount of time. So I, I got it out and I will be making projects with it in the future. So I'm going to turn the camera around. It's a very bright day here. So if you see a lot of light coming in from this side, I've got curtains blocking off the light, but it might be a little bit bright um, over here on the side. Um, but I will show you the card that we're casing and I'm going to show you how to make it. It is a fun one. It is actually what I called an unbrenda card because I would not design this card. Not because I don't like it. It's because it's not my natural style, but I'm going to show you how I did it because it's kind of cool. I love this. Okay, let me switch you guys around. Oh, there is my morning this morning. The sun is reflecting off the blue water of the Charles River and it is very windy and cold this morning. Um, I went out for a walk this morning and I was completely, completely bundled up. Let me get my camera situated. Okay. That looks pretty good. Okay, so this is the card that we're casing this morning. It's got this beautiful greeting, and this greeting was created with this stamp set here that comes in pieces, so you can actually stamp it in different colors to create this variegated effect. I wanted to create that look, but I don't have the stamp set. But I do have um, some word thinlets. So I want to show you how you can create this look of this variegated greeting without having a special stamp set to do that. I also love the colors. 
um, and I used flowers instead of hearts. So this is my card right here. I think it makes it a really bright and beautiful thank you card. Um, so this is um, how, this is my thank you thinlet, and um, I'm gonna show you how I did that. But first, before we jump into how to do this greeting, I've got the speckling in the background, and I wanna show you how I did that. I've got a piece of lemon lime twist right here. This one is four inches by five and a quarter inches. And I've got my aqua painter and I'm gonna grab, where's my lemon lime twist ink pad? Okay, this is my lemon lime twist ink pad. I've got an old style pad here. Uh, lemon lime twist is going to retire in spring so I didn't replace my ink colors that are outgoing um, just because they weren't going to be around um, for that much longer and I didn't want to invest in a new set just for a partial year. So what I did, um, I took some reinker and I squeezed it into my lid and then I'm going to squeeze a little bit of water as well um, into there as well and now I've got my aqua painter kind of inky. And I'm just going to kind of splatter onto my backdrop and get some splatters. It's going to have like varying degrees of intensity because it's going to, some of it's going to be more watery and some of it's going to be more inky. Okay, so I'm just kind of splattering more on the one side than the other. And you can see how that, that looks. Um, I'm going to set this let me clean off my green so it I'm just squeezing the barrel of my um, ink so I'm cleaning back off my brush and later on what I do with this um, lid that I use to flick with um, I just run that under the tap afterwards to get it uh, clean again so I'm gonna set this side and I wanted to do this first so that it could dry uh, for the rest of my project. And then I'm gonna just close up my ink pad for now. And you can see this is a vinyl work surface, so I'm just gonna rub it clean. Might take a little bit of my rubbing alcohol here just to remove the ink because I do not want that onto on my project. All right. So next we're gonna create this thank you right here. So I'm gonna use a piece of glossy cardstock. I've cut this piece to four inches by three inches. We're gonna use four colors of ink. Let me get them lined up in the correct order. So we've got Grapefruit Grove, Melon Mambo, Coastal Cabana, and Lemon Lime Twist. And you can see right here, this is the outlier ink pad, the one that I haven't replaced yet. I've got all my new ink pads are now replaced. So um, it's really nice to use these um, ink pads. Let me, I'm turning these around. I want them all looking the same. All right, so. Now we're gonna take sponge, sponge daubers, and if you don't know what these are, these are little um, kind of thimbles with sponge ends. So you just put your finger in there, they're great. I've designated, uh, I buy a bunch of blank ones, and then as I use them for a specific color, I label them, and I just put a piece of tape over that. That's a little tiny piece of Avery label, and I put tape over that. So I've de designated that one for Lemon Lime Twist um, for, um, Coastal Cabana, Melon Mambo, and Grapefruit Grove. So we're gonna take our piece, I'm gonna ink up first the Grapefruit Grove, and I'm just going to rub Grapefruit Grove over here. I'm gonna get it as dark as possible. Um, I like doing it this way. You could cut the thank you, then let out first, and then try and ink it up. But this is going to give it a really random flavor because you're not gonna, you don't know where all the different letters are gonna land. So it gives it kind of a random look. Next, we're gonna take Melon Mambo and we're gonna bring it in and we're gonna blend it just a little bit on the edge with the um, Grapefruit Grove. 
you can see Melon Mambo is a much darker color to begin with, so I didn't have to work as hard to get it onto the ink pad. Let's try Costa Cabana next. Coastal is a little lighter, so we're going to have to work a little bit harder to get a nice dark look. Um, I call this a sherbet card because it's got colors that kind of remind me of sherbet. And then finally, we're going to do Lemon Lime Twist. You want to try and have um, the almost the whole thing covered. You don't need to go right to the edges because the thank you thinlet isn't going to um, be all the way to the edges. So if you want to go back, you can blend a little bit more if you want. But I think that looks pretty good in terms of the colors. Let me set these aside real quick. I need to find spots to put these that I'm not going to stick my fingers into. All right. So now we're going to bring in the Big Shot. And I've got my magnetic platform on here and I've got one cutting plate already on here. We've got my little piece and you could use a different type of cardstock as well. In fact, I might just like just do that with a tissue just to make sure there's no residual ink. Actually, none of it came off, so that's pretty good. Um, you could try this with shimmery cardstock as well, or you could try this even with Whisper White. I just like glossy because glossy has that smooth finish so you can kind of rub very easily over top. Then I'm just going to plop my thank you on here. Make sure that your die has some of all of the colors in it. Um, so you can, there's a little bit of shifting you can do. But it's going to be a little bit random as well. You could also tip it a little bit so that you've kind of got a different sort of look rather than it being completely um, vertical. It's got a little bit of a twist to it. So I'll put my second cutting plate on top, run it through, and then come back again. And let's see how this turned out. It will always be different. So I'm just going to pop out those and let me grab a paper piercing tool. There's a few pieces here that just need um, holes popped out of. And then let's pop out our thank you. Ta-da! Doesn't that look cool? I love that. I find that this is a little easier to do it this way then if you would cut the thank you first and then try to sponge dauber over top of it because um, there is some detail in here and you might actually catch some of these finer pieces and um, bend them when you're sponge daubering afterwards. So this is a nice way to, if you do it before and then cut it, um, it works out a little better. So let me get rid of this. And then we need to cut ourselves an oval. And I've got, these are the layering ovals framelets. I've got a regular piece of Whisper White here. And I'm going to use the largest smooth sided oval. And let me just get rid of some of these little paper pierce, paper pieces. And we'll just cut one oval. All right. And hello to everyone who's joining me this morning. Here is my oval. I'm using that just as a backdrop piece. I'm not going to actually stamp on it. We're actually not even stamping on anything today. It's a stamp-free card. It is a inky card, but not a um, stamped card. So let's start to get all the pieces that we need. This is our speckled piece here. And we need to punch some flowers out of some cardstock. I've got Melon Mambo here. You know what? I wonder if this is Melon Mambo. Well, we'll just go with it. We'll go with it. It's close enough. Punch of flower. It's supposed to be Melon Mambo so it matches the ink. But now that I look at it, I don't know if I got the right shade. 
All right, and then this is Coastal Cabana. We're gonna do one flower out of Coastal Cabana. And then we'll do one flower out of Grapefruit Grow. Um, do it out of this end so I don't use up cardstock accidentally punching it with something else. All right, so we've got our three flowers. And then if you want to, I just kind of bent up the flower petals just with my hands just to um, give them a little bit more dimension so they're not quite super flat. All right, and then I'm going to use some of these adhesive backed sequins and I'm just going to pop them off with my paper piercing tool. Come on you. I like that these already have adhesive on them, that way I don't have to mess with them. All right, so those are my flowers. Okay, I think I am ready for assembly. So this card, you know, I called it my unbrenda card because I like to do things in kind of an orderly fashion. And this card is kind of, seems a little bit free for all, but it's actually pretty controlled because if you think about it, I've used four ink colors. I, you know, I sponged them fairly e evenly on that um, glossy white piece. So it's got the look of four colors. It looks random, but it's not really that random. I flicked specks onto here, but it's kind of in a controllable environment and I could just kind of have fun with it. So I'm just going to put some Tombow on the back of my speckled piece and I'm going to add it to a card base. This card base started off as 11 inches by four and a quarter inches and then I scored it in half at the five and a half inch mark. And I'm just going to add my speckled piece centered on the front. Glue that down here and then I'm going to take my oval, some Tombow onto it. I want to have maybe three quarters of an inch from the top. Yeah, about three quarters of an inch from the top and then centered from side to side like that. Then I can take my thank you piece and just find some of the biggest areas to anchor your piece down with. If you're not familiar with Tombow, it's my favorite adhesive for adhering things because it really just, it sticks things down really, really well. So I'm gonna kind of center this from side to side. Uh, three pieces of the thank you are going to be sticking out. So you'll have the Y, the T, and the K that will be just hanging over the oval a bit. I don't think that looks bad. It's kind of, you know, a kind of a random sort of free for all look. So we should try and embrace that. Now for the flowers, here's how I arrange them. They look random, but they're not. So Grapefruit Grove goes under Grapefruit Grove. Melon Mambo comes under Melon Mambo. And then Coastal Cabana comes up under or over top of Coastal Cabana. And you can kind of just arrange that how you want. Okay, so you want to get those flowers kind of situated first where you like them. And then you can come back and add the Tombow. So that's how I created a random looking card, but it's not really random. I totally controlled it because that's just me and my personality. And I also like to be able to show everyone how to recreate how I did it. So this is my way of showing you, okay, you can be random, but you can add some control over it so that you can recreate my card. So yeah, I think right about there. That's good. And so finally, I just added some rhinestone jewels to my card. And you can just pick different sizes. I'm gonna put two up at the top. Um, let me grab a smaller one and put that up there. And then I just want a few for the bottom as well. If you have your take your pick tool, 
um, you can use that as well to pick things up. I've just got my paper piercing tool right here, so it's like easy and yeah. You know, you move it around, you decide where do you want it. There. All right. So there is my random thank you card that, you know, isn't completely random now that I've told you my little secrets. And each card will look a little different. You can see my thank yous um, turned out just a little bit different with the sponging. Um, and the speckling will also add its own little element and design to it. So that also kind of keeps it fresh and different because you're going to have different speckle splotches on there when you do it. But it's just kind of a nice way to add like a little bit more fun onto the card. And I hope that brightened up your day a bit because um, I, I love this holiday season, but sometimes, you know, all those traditional colors floating around there, I think it's just nice to have something new and fresh um, coming in. Um, so... I don't think this was a hard card, so I don't see any questions. So let me just flip around. And well, um, I already told you I won't be here next week because it's Christmas Day on a Tuesday. So um, I hope you all have a Merry Christmas if you celebrate that. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope you have a happy holiday and enjoy spending some time with friends and family or doing something that you enjoy. And um, I will see you back here on January 1st. Yes, I am going to do a Facebook Live on January 1st. Hopefully someone will be up and it won't just be me, but uh, it should be fun. Now, before I go, don't forget that Facebook um, Casing Tuesday is not just about me. Uh, we have a whole Facebook group where you can share your card based on the card that we had today. So this is the card that we had today. Um, it's on page 47 of the holiday catalog if you look in the description of this video below you'll see a link to our casing Tuesday Facebook group you can click on it and join it you can see all what everyone else has um, done with this particular card and given it a makeover and um, so you can get some different ideas and then you can create your own and post it back here um, on the Casing Tuesday Facebook group because we would love to see what you do with the card and um, so it's just really easy to join um, just go on there. I have one question to ask you when you join. What is your favorite Stampin' Up! stamp set? Just ask, answer that question and then I can approve you and um, put you on to our, our group. And I hope that we will see you there because it's really fun when you take something and you participate in it too. Maybe you'll have a, a, little, a few little hours in the craziness of the holiday to come join us and do that this week. All right, guys, I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you back here in two weeks. Take care. Bye bye.